but on this one they made her look so cute and bro she looks so precious in the anime <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that, you know, she just looks so cute that I really want to squeeze her. You know what I'm saying? Daddy, chill. Yo, what's up, TFM Nation? It's me, the TFM Mudger here again. And I really wasn't going to do this because there's not much to discuss about this ed actually it's mostly you know illustrations from volume 0 and volume 11 but some of you have requested and at the same time i don't really you know get some of this you know in the chess piece and someone pointed it out but i'll give you a shout out here it is i'll just read the comment it's from at eric nguyen one two one nine um yeah so it says here at uh, the chess piece all right let me just go here yeah right here there you go uh interesting interesting okay so we can see don't know if this was intentional or not but some of the chess pieces seem to not have been placed correctly as positions of the king and queen have been flipped or for both sides. Not only that, but the orientation of the board looks as if it has been rotated. Since from the white's perspective, the bottom right square is meant to be the same color. This is my guess, but I think the art is probably meant to represent a literal reflection, quote unquote, of the chessboard uh, to the situation in the anime currently. Listen, I don't know if uh if that is the case, but uh yeah. Anyway, um this is an E D breakdown analysis and at the same time I'm gonna I'm gonna mention things in the opening as well because it's really interesting to look at the opening again. Especially when you have the creditless version from Kado Kawa themselves. So yeah. Alright, so um okay so at here uh i'm just gonna quickly mention this this zero right here people have said that this is translated to luck or good luck and honestly it's accurate because ayana koji does not have any luck either it might be comedy or serious situation so yeah that's pretty accurate i must say so yeah he does have unfortunate luck and he's never been lucky you know so yeah that heavily reflects ayana koji sorry if i may seem a bit down because i just got back home and this is the day after the anime because i woke up early right after i finished editing and uploading my episode two of season three reaction and um yeah we reported our reports that is why uh, my uh, freaking, um, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> my energy is kind of low right now. But uh, yeah. Anyway, that's uh, luck. And uh, what else? Uh, if you've seen the music video from uh, Zach uh, in her translation, the gamesmanship, honestly, you know. And it's a combination her lyrics, you know, the song is a combination of her first song, Cast Room, Cast Room, and uh, Dance in the Game. You know, We Are the Travelers, that's a reference to that, and then Dance in the Game, Dancing in the Game. So, yeah, that's a reference to Dance in the Game. So, yeah, which is, you know, if you heard the full song, you'll get it. Oh, yeah, it's Kishiro, by the way. And, yeah, Hirata looking distressed, Yamauchi depressed. I'm going to show you the illustration of uh, Depressed Yamauchi in the uh, light novel. And Kushida, look at that. <laughs> yeah. Looking at this credit list is so much better. So, yeah. And then this one, this volume zero, will be um, related to the ED breakdown later. And then, uh, yeah, I really love this sequence. Especially when now that I know that the director and the storyboarder of this opening theme is actually a fan of clash with the elite bro that just goes to show you that there's love and passion for this um 
uh, visuals and opening theme song. You know, the visuals and the opening. And then this. This one. I need to highlight this. The chairs. Someone pointed this out in my comment section. Thank you. So I gotta give you a shout out real quick. Dear G Gix. I don't know how to pronounce this. Dear G-I-X. Yeah. 4732. Um... I think even the chairs have their own meanings that relate to whoever sits on it. So, yeah. And then uh, he only identified two, which is totally fine, considering I don't even know the meaning of the chairs to begin with until I saw this comment. And, uh, yeah. First of all, I got to say, though, when I saw this, you know, the different chairs, you know, Saka and Agi on the, on the rolling chair and... Uh, Ryuan, it's like a couch, and then this one as well, but different, you know. Look at that, and then Ayana Koji, a regular chair of like a classroom. So, yeah, you get my point, right? So, that's where it kind of, you know, it kind of really intrigued me. But then someone commented this, and I was met, I was amazed, you know. Someone actually pointed it out, and I'm actually super glad that someone pointed it out. Ichinose is sitting on the Barcelona chair created in 1929 by Ludwig Mies van der Rohe. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I don't even know how to pronounce these. Anyway, Lily Reach. I don't know. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm screwing the pronunciation anyway. For the International Exposition in Barcelona. Spain. So yeah, in Spain. Well, it's part of the Bauhaus movement, a movement to reconcile capitalist cutthroat mass production with individual emotions and creativity. Ichinosa's class is similar in that regard. Amid the deceit and manipulation classroom with the elite students have to deal on a daily basis. Ichinosa's class is that one small refuge from all of that w where you can keep in touch with your emotions makes them targets though fun fact yuri Breyer is sitting on the exact same chair in the fifth volume cover of spy family manga well, that yeah that's interesting ryuan's chair on the other hand is the la Cub i don't know how to pronounce that <laughs> yeah grand comfort sofa yeah which was designed by swiss french architect le Le Corbusier. I don't even know how to pronounce that. I am so butchering these names. Along with Charlotte, Char Charlotte Period, and Pierre Generet. Oh my God, <laughs> these names. I can't. Le Corbusier. I don't know. Has an interesting way of looking at furniture, as detailed in his book. Uh, Lart. The. Uh, oh my God. <laughs> Extensions of our limbs and adapt uh, and adapted to human functions that are type needs and type functions, therefore type objects and type furniture. The human limb object is a de uh, is a docile docile servant. A good servant is a discreet and self and self effacing self effacing thing in order to leave his master free. Certainly works. Oh, Certainly works of art are tools, beautiful tools, and long live the good taste manifested by choice. Subtly, proportion, and harmony. I mean, subtlety. Oh, my God. Fun fact, Twilight, a.k.a. Lloyd Forger, is sitting on this exact same chair in the first volume cover of Spy Family. So, yeah, this is some good information right here. Some good insight, some good intel. I haven't identified the artist in Kia's chairs. Yet, but I think Arsh's chair is a swivel ball chair from the atomic age 1950s. Just give me those vibes for some reason. So yeah, thank you for that comment. It really helps out a lot. Even though yeah, he he didn't identify the chairs of Ayana Koji and Saki Anagi. Still though, these two are already good enough to know. So yeah. We now know that these chairs have deeper meaning as well. So, yeah, symbolic once again. <sighs> the director of this opening is just so good. Anyway, what else? This one. Okay, someone pointed this out, and I didn't even see it at first, by the way. So, if you take a look here, it's a small detail, but look at Susan's face. 
she ain't smiling but if you as you go to it look at that she smiles as well as manabu look at that manabu wasn't smiling at first but yeah he smiles as they distance themselves you know look at that they smiled at each other even though they are like you know manabu is like upside down so yeah still and then anakoji you know facing backwards but this also represents i already said it but yeah uh anakoji facing it like uh, you know he's facing like this because this represents that anakoji has always been there he's always been the connection between the two siblings and that is why this time they can now communicate to one another to each other so yeah because this is spoiler territory for volume 11.5 and uh what's going to happen in volume 10 they actually talk to each other so yeah and this one yeah this um i really didn't know what the meaning of this is but uh someone pointed out that this is like a tra uh transfer of points so yeah and then this finally not only is the NXE4 important, but also the knight. So, I gotta give a shout out once again to at Eric Nguyen. I don't know if I'm actually butchering this one. Yeah. I think Aris' knight and Koji's bishop mean something else in regards to their personalities. Arisu has been shown to be a somewhat carefree genius who adjusts their plans according to their opponent's move. Similar to how the knight in the chess community has been associated with unpredictability due to its unique moving ability. Now, if you know chess, I hope you all know chess. I know basic chess, obviously, but I'm not a pro at chess. It's just, you know, basic chess because my cousin plays chess and I play with him. But I'm not, you know, super good and I'm not that talented in chess. But basically, the knight, the horse... Yeah, we call it a knight, obviously. The movement is an L. <laughs> L. Anyway, yeah, you get my point. L. In any kind of L. Like, it can be like this. Short, short that, then long here. Short on the vertical side, you know, and then longer on the horizontal side. Well, you know, any, any, uh, any direction. Left or right. And then... Uh, in another way, it can be the vertical is longer, but shorter on the horizontal side. So, yeah. Yeah. Anyway, I'm, oh my god, I'm prolonging the video. Well, just the opening. Anyway, yeah. You get the point. Koji is always waiting and scheming in the shadows until the time is right to strike. The bishop in the chess community is universally dubbed the sniper of the game because of its reputation of opponents missing its deadly presence until it's too late. Thus, Koji's association with it. That is honestly really well planned out. The bishop symbolism. So it's not just the BXD5, but also the bishop, you know. It also has a different meaning other than the bishop's move, you know, and the, the masterful move of the bishop. It also described their personality, you know. Oh my god, man. So yeah, if you know bishop... You know, if it's placed on the white uh, uh, square board, uh, it can move very far, you know. Uh, but it's like a side movement, side movement or, you know, like that. Yeah. So there's two bishops in the black, uh, black board, black square or black, I mean, white square, white box, white... <laughs> Anyway, yeah, you get the point. So, yeah, that's how bishops move, and unlike the knight, it's very unique. So, that's a very well thought out, uh, you know, symbolism. That's all for the opening that I, you know, wanted to share once again. So, yeah, let's go on to the ending theme. I, it's pretty gonna, it's gonna be pretty short. I promise. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so I don't know what this is all about. Like, I I didn't know, or I don't know what the meaning of this is yet. It's there, it, it, the bubbles. It's like under underwater, you know. There's got to be a meaning here. Uh, it might be because my brain is dead right now. <laughs> because I'm really exhausted when I'm doing this video right now, guys. I'm sorry. 
But uh, let me know down in the comments. Like I said, I don't know everything, okay? So it's good that you guys are providing some intel that I didn't see or didn't even, you know, noticed or didn't even know in general. So yeah, then bubbles continued more. And then chess, Sakenagi playing chess alone again. And then this shot, this shot right here, kind of, you know, it represents, it kind of represents or parallels this that I'm going to show you, this illustration, the confrontation in volume 10, the declaration that it's now the time for them to fight. So yeah, after the expulsion, spoiler alert. Yeah, it kind of parallels that, I guess, but in this one, because this ending theme is basically Sakayanagi's perception, her POV, you know. So, and also the song, quite frankly, this song is actually, you know, related somehow to Sakayanagi or Arisu. Oh my god, I'm feeling dizzy. What the hell is going on? Oh, I'm feeling the uh, the dizziness in my head. <gasps> I'm so oh god. I've got to show you the uh, the lyrics later. As you can see, Saga and Nagi is at the top of the stairs, and Ayana Koji is looking at Saga and Nagi, and Arisu, Saga and Nagi is looking down on Ayana Koji. Now, this song is related to Saga and Nagi. Why? Well, we'll get into that later, but first off, we're going to take a look at the visuals, okay, before the song. So, yeah, this kind of parallels that illustration that I just mentioned. And then the bear, yes, uh, in volume zero. Look at Sakanagi, lonely. Yeah. Uh, also, the shadow. Look at that. The hat. But she doesn't wear the hat here. Yeah. As you can see, the hat here, but no hat here. I, I don't know what this is. Okay. So, to be fair, and to be completely honest with y'all, I have not read volume zero fully. I've only read the the summary and uh, the spoilers of Volume Zero because clearly there's no English uh, official release. So, yeah, uh, I don't know if I can read it properly and legally because I want to buy the book officially. So, yeah. Anyway, uh, I don't know what this scissor means and why are there hair strands? Sakainagi's hair, Aris's hair, and then the chess pieces again. So yeah, um, also this, King Down for the white. Damn, I'm having a mental block. <laughs> mm. But the black, isn't the Anakoji black? What do you mean by that? But this is queen. I think, I think this represents white as Koji because that's king. That's a king piece and it's white probably white room so white room student and then sake and Nagi as the black queen standing on top and then you know surrounded by white room students i guess i'll perceive it like that you know and then this this is interesting a king is surrounded by many queen a black queen uh chess pieces i i don't know what this symbolizes but if this is indeed the Koji, i i don't know man let me know down in the comments like i said i don't know anything or everything actually and plus i'm having a a, a mental block like i can't process a lot in this video right now oh man after after my reporting earlier yeah, my my mental <laughs> my mental uh, you know stability is not going so well right. <laughs> anyway, um, and then Saka and Nagi is looking at the chess pieces and it's reflected on her eyes. It's a it's a small detail that I didn't see at first, and when I repeatedly watched the video, watched this ending theme, I saw that that these uh, chess pieces on her uh, eyes that are reflected. You can see it'll vanish once she blinks. Boom. I mean, it's probably just, you know, her eyes, just me over exaggerating that those are chess pieces, but uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's just Saka and Agi thinking, you know. Anyway, and this one, like I said, this was mentioned by Eric Nguyen. Yeah. 
Um, I really, I don't know, man. And then this one. Um, this is volume zero content. This is volume zero illustration. And for comparison, here is the volume zero illustration at the side that I'm going to show you. And um, yeah, it, it's just basically visuals. And this one is, uh, I already, I have this uh, illustration. Um, hold on, let me just get the volume 11. There you go. <laughs> uh, I can show it to you. <laughs> but I'm going to show it to you on, uh, you know, on this side as well. So yeah. But yeah, it's this one. Boom. <laughs> you can see the comparison right there side to side <laughs> yeah um i like the uh the cute version in the anime look at this uh, look at how cute sakenagi looks she looks so cute and on this one she looks cute as well but like there's that smug lolly vibe to her but yeah, unlike in the anime shown in the visuals here like she's just cute <laughs> That's that. This that's um I think this is her monologue, Sakayanagi's monologue, Soliloquy. Um that's why the illustration here is shown because it was uh in volume eleven it was her soliloquy. So yeah, it's uh it's Sakayanagi's moment, Aris's moment, so yeah, that's why they probably showed it here. They won't probably show it in the anime. You know, that's why they're showing it in the ending theme. <laughs> Still, Studio Lurch, uh, Studio Lurch cooked in this uh, vis visual, so, um, yeah. And then this. Um, I love this. I love this visual. Um, this is, um, hold on. Let me go. Pause. There you go. As you can see, this visual parallels volume 11. Okay, I'm going to show you the certain illustration I'm talking about. This one. My favorite, one of my favorite illustrations, by the way, this show off right here, this standoff. I, I really like this illustration. That's why when I saw this, I was like, wow. But the difference is they're standing, you know, back to back. Unlike here, they're facing off each other. So, yeah. But at the same time, you know, this is not outside, unlike that well that was shown here in the anime they're outside i think this is basically yeah i think this is basically like the end mixed with the end of volume 11 you know like the respect sakayanagi and ayana koji felt and uh yeah i think uh it was so it was so well made like this visual is so well made i love it overall though so um yeah i can't wait for this peak to get adapted hopefully peak adaptation like volume 7 <laughs> like the animation quality as well they've never you know they've never um lowered their animation quality in uh, episode one and two of season three so far though but um yeah and then uh let's see here some people have mentioned this uh we got a short glimpses of Ayana Koji, the death glare. <laughs> yeah. Some people have mentioned this. Some people say that, um, did he smile? I'm like, what? He didn't. <laughs> no, he didn't. <laughs> he didn't smile. So, yeah. Uh, but we all know he smiled on, uh, year two. We all know who, who got, uh, who got him to smile. <laughs> anyway. This one is volume zero. I'm going to show you the illustration right here on this side again. And um, yeah, it's uh, perfectly, not perfectly though. Saka and Nagi looks cute in the anime. Wow. <laughs> she just looks cute. But in the light novel, you can actually, you know, feel the smug vibe of Saka and Nagi. But on this one, they made her look so cute. And, bro, she looks so precious in the anime. <laughs> I'm not saying it's a bad thing. I'm just saying that, you know, she just looks so cute that I really want to squeeze her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Daddy, chill. Um, and Anna Koji. Oh, God. Anna Koji at the back. Yeah. I'm going to show you the full visual here. You know, because it's a pen 
up so yeah pan up of the camera so that you guys can see the full visual of Sakenagi. here we go i saved it so yeah <laughs> and i also saved the uh the illustration earlier basically it I'm gonna show you the now. I'm gonna show you the lyrics here on Muse Asia. Uh, uh, okay, 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 okay. Ooh, 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 spoilers. Everybody up and down. Already consent for the bad end, girl. <laughs> hey yo, hey yo. Truth is stranger than fiction. Ain't, well, ain't that the truth? <laughs> oh, truth. And so calculatingly mediocre, this contrived idealism. That's how Sakayanagi perceives it. Move forward and overturn the singularity. Uh huh. ABCD determines the winner and loser. Sakayanagi once again. Because she's class A. And. You know, she always, you know, wins. <laughs> Circumstances decided by rank. There you go. Yep. Meaning of life. Feeling a bit suffocated. Oh, interesting. Okay, I didn't see that. Inferiority births itself from the difference in character. Okay, we're getting into the good stuff now because I, uh, you know, I know the lyrics past this one. Can we not help it? Can you not? Can I not? Is it the limits of our DNA value? Now, why is the lyrics bringing up DNA? This is going to be spoiler territory for, like, I mean, anime onlys. The correct answer is unequal. Alright. You have to screw it up to proceed. Such a romantic plot development. Will never so conveniently occur. It's eat or be eaten in this reality. The overwhelming great principle. I've noticed it all along. The correct answer is unequal. Well, okay, again. Nothing changes when you give up. Get used to the unfair development. And you might win this time. It's eat or be eaten in this reality. The overwhelming principle. What I have been chasing after so long. The great revolution of this era. Okay. Now, why did I guys let you uh, see the lyrics of this ED? They're bringing up what Sakayanagi sees. And what her viewpoint is. You know, what what she perceives of the... Of the things, you know, DNA. Okay, so this is basically nature versus nurture. Okay? So, the way Sakayanagi sees it, alright? The way Sakayanagi sees Ayana Koji is he is, you know, uh, not talented. He's not a genius. He is just created to be a genius by the facility, the, by the white room. Unlike Sakayanagi... She's a born talented genius. Her DNA is superior than Nayan Koji, who is not superior in DNA, but was just created to be smart, to be genius. You know, a talented genius. Basically, he was created, unlike Sakayanagi, she was born talented. The way it relates to the lyrics as well is... Sakayanagi's theme. That is why I love the ED along with the visuals focusing on Sakayanagi. It focuses on Arisu so much because that is symbolic, you know, especially the way Sakayanagi sees things, you know. So, um, yeah, anyway, that's all for this ED breakdown. I mean, it's pretty short on the ED side. I just also mentioned things on the opening that I wanted to point out because of some people pointed out that uh, that sticked out to me. So, yeah, I just wanted to share it to you guys as well. So, um, yeah, if you guys didn't you know, see the comments on that video. But, um, yeah, anyway, that is it for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. I will 
Catch you guys on my honest feelings review of episode 2 of season 3. Which is going to be controversial, I guess. But, yeah. I'll give my opinion. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. Peace out.